Yeah, well, it's a very good question, uh, very pertinent question for today. Uh, business continuity is the prime uh, mover for the uh, businesses. Security, whether preventive, detective or remedial, has no meaning for business ever. So they need their business to be either running all the time, even with security or without security. And in case it fails, it should come back as soon as possible, as we say ASAP. Now, to do that, you have to have three kinds of uh, protections put. One is preventive. So you prevent anything wrong happening to the uh, system and the applications. Number two is you detect if something is going wrong as soon as possible. And third is that you may, uh, you have to have systems in place where you can recover from the failure which are inevitable as soon as possible. So for that, few things which we uh, recommend to our uh, business and to our colleagues in the IT and the security team also that it is not uh, sufficient to have a backup. Backup is a preventive uh, control, but it is not sufficient to have backup. What your backup uh, contains is also important. Second thing is, your backup should always be monitored backup. It, it is not that, that you take a backup and let's throw it uh, somewhere and it will be fetched when you need it. Your backup should be always tested backup and regularly you should be checking whether it is readable or not. So this is one preventive thing we do, even if the uh, incident is not happening. This goes in a long way um, in recovering from any uh, failure because business wants its data to be available. Then only it can function further. Your systems may take time to come back, but if the data is available even manually to the users, then they can somehow carry on with their business. So this is the, my advice to them. Uh, it's a very difficult challenge and it's not going to go away in uh, near future because uh, you can, can't just throw away the legacy systems because they are uh, quite stable, uh, serving us fine, and there is a cost involved. In every uh, migration, there is a cost involved. And business is not willing to pay the cost unless and until there is a huge business benefit or revenue benefit out of it. So what we do is, in this uh, scenario is, we uh, try to get technologies for both the worlds. That is, the legacy is protected by the legacy uh, uh, systems. Uh, maybe there are no tools available, so we will have to depend on the manpower there to monitor and uh, control or prevent the uh, incidents. And on the new infrastructure, that is cloud and cloud-like infrastructure, a lot of tools are available, including in this uh, event also. So we use them to monitor, uh, we will say visibility, monitoring and control. So visibility you have to maintain by manually or by using tools. Then monitoring also you can do by automated means or by uh, using the tools. Control mostly whether in legacy or in the new cloud has to be done by uh, um, humans still. There is automation being done but uh, that automation also depends upon humans to design and put it in place. So that's what we do in a context. Going forward, I hope that most of the legacy systems will be slowly and slowly moving towards cloud-based systems or containerized systems, even on-premise or on uh, public cloud. And uh, the uh, tools which are right now available only on cloud, they will be able to help us even on on-premise cloud also. So that uh, hybrid model will work uh, for us, for the tools also. So they will be able to uh, serve us in the future as well. Cloud is the future.
and uh, whether it is public cloud or on premise cloud as i said you have to make all your applications and systems cloud enabled cloud technology enabled so uh, depending upon the cost of uh, uh, moving to cloud we decide that which systems starting with the simpler systems which are easy to uh, modify and easy to move we move them there uh, you talked about how to, how we select the use case use case is uh, very simple to select is that you decide how many users are going to impact or how much revenue is it is going to impact if it is uh, number of users are more on the internet then it is a very good candidate to move to cloud anyway but if it is a very highly revenue sensitive uh, application then i have to think that whether moving to cloud will keep the my revenue flow intact or not if it is going to hurt my revenue flow if uh, uh, people start uh, you know uh, facing issues with the um, that cloud uh, uh, that migration has a um, issue period also it is not always smooth it will take 6 months 1 year to completely change over then we uh, do it in a phase wise manner some applications simpler and uh, on premise applications are so uh, you know uh, what i should say so small that they can be uh, uh, lock stock and barrel they can be shifted to a cloud environment and they uh, will have issues but those issues are resolvable in a given um, period and they do not impact lot of users or lot of revenue so it is the uh, the use case which we select for moving from on premise to cloud is always based on uh number one the user impacted by that second is the kind of revenue uh, it generates and whether it is going to be impacted for how long it is going to be impacted security always will be uh, uh better if you move to cloud because no more number of tools are available so that is not the consideration any more while we move from on premise to cloud these events are always very helpful they help us uh, in connecting with uh, the new uh, uh, vendors new oems uh, some of them have just come up uh, and come up very fast and uh, with the government's uh, focus on make in india so where many of the uh, uh, oems which we meet now they have uh, significant presence in india some of uh, you know Uh, ground up indian uh, oems so this these type of events they help us connect between uh, knowing the technologies their uh, uh, you know in depth uh, capabilities and all that and of course there is a lot of networking part of it also